People tell us every week that our information has helped save their life. If you agree that this is helpful information, please like, share, and most of all, subscribe because nothing makes a channel like subscriptions. So let's dive into these tests. Instead of guessing, do you have inflammation? What test do you need? We're going to talk about four today. One is called highly sensitive C-reactive protein. This is produced from the liver whenever you have anything that causes inflammation. So a toothache, a head cold, a sprained ankle, all of those things can raise the C-reactive protein. Those tend to raise it briefly and it comes right back down after that inflammation subsides. However, the fat that forms around your organs that we call visceral fat, which almost all always comes from insulin resistance. And that's why that's such a big topic on this channel. But that fat that builds up under your waistline and around the liver and inside the liver and around the heart and in the organs is inflammatory fat. And it sends a signal to the liver to say, make C-reactive protein. So it's a good marker of inflammatory fat, which is going to inflame your artery. Now, C-reactive protein by itself doesn't <coughs> cause the disease. It's just a marker. Think of it this way. If I check your temperature with the thermometer, and the fever is just a way of letting you know that. An elevated C-reactive protein is an early marker for inflammation. The next early marker is a protein that can leak into the urine. Albumin that you probably know best as being the white of eggs is also an important protein in our bloodstream. It regulates lots of things. And protein is supposed to stay in the bloodstream and not get into the urine. In fact, albumin is a really big molecule, so it's hard to get out of the small blood vessels into the urine, unless you've got arterial aging and damage to that arterial highway, and you have potholes that are big enough that let that albumin show up in the urine. And guess what? This typically show up in the early stages on your doctor's routine urine test that you may get once a year. It's invisible to that test. Remember, most tests that doctors do in their office are designed to find disease that's already established. What you want to do is find the early signals problems so that you can change course, allow your body to heal and prevent the damage from accelerating creatinine ratio. So it's a way of looking at two different chemicals in the urine as a canary in the coal mine. Miners used to take canaries down with them, and maybe they do this still in some undeveloped countries, because canaries are very sensitive to not enough oxygen in the air, which can happen underground in mines. And so coal miners for decades would take canaries down in the mines, and if the canary fell off its perch, they knew they needed to get out of the mine. Well, if your canary falls off the perch, if you've got microalbumin in your urine, you need to get out of the events that are damaging your arteries. You need to find those root causes so that you can get run to safety. I like to call these two tests smoke detectors. Just like the smoke detector in your home, if it goes off, you know you need to check something out. Probably check the batteries first because they may be old, but maybe you left the toaster down too long and it's burning, or heaven forbid there really is a something smoldering in your house. But a smoke detector is an early warning. It's not a call to urgent action necessarily, so if your smoke alarm goes off, you don't call 911 as the very first thing you go check out your house. And then if you find some real smoke, you're gonna call 911. But the smoke detectors do alert you to, hey, keep looking, something's not right. And that's where these next two tests come in, which I like to call the fire alarm. These two tests absolutely have been shown to be predictive of heart attacks and strokes in the quote, near future. Now, what does that mean? Well, it could mean today, it could mean next week. It could mean over the next weeks, months, or even few years. But they are a call to urgent action. If you get either one of these tests to be positive, then we know that you have active, vulnerable plaques somewhere in your system. And if it happens to be a, a brain artery, stroke is the risk. If it happens to be a heart artery, heart attack is the risk. And guess what? 4% of healthy people have one of the two fire alarms ringing, which means 
8% of people, one out of 12, the folks that are watching me right now, one out of 12 of you has one or the other of the fire alarms ringing, and it's not been detected on any other test that you've done. It certainly doesn't show up on a stress test. That's why that's a myth about stress testing. But 4% have one or the other. Let me talk just briefly about how those two, why they're so predictive. The first test, this lipoprotein associated phospholipase A2, we, we abbreviate that plaque 2 That's released by the white blood cells that are trying to chew up the plaque. The plaque in the artery wall is seen as an invader. It's seen as dangerous. And so the immune system, the white blood cells say, let's attack it, let's kill it. And they digest that plaque in part by using this plaque 2 chemical. Well, guess what? That just turns it into a toxic stew. I've used the analogy that it's like a pimple. It's not a pimple, but it's very much like a pimple that gets all of those toxic juices in there. And that's what can burst and rupture just like a real pimple. The myeloperoxidase, on the other hand, is another digestive enzyme that gets released from the white blood cells. But these are the white blood cells that are floating through the bloodstream. They're in the channel. And when they see plaque, they stick to it and they release myeloperoxidase, which number one kills bacteria by releasing bleach, but it also kills the cells lining the artery. And so now we have an attack on the inside wall of the artery and underneath the lining of the artery. That's what these two fire alarms are telling us. If either one is there, we know that there's a much higher near-term risk for heart attack and stroke. If they're both there, it's an even higher risk. When Ford and I see these in our practice, we know that that's an urgent call. We've got to literally put out the fire with lots of different strategies. So the inflammation tests are foundational.